Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian. I'm here today at the James D. Julia Auction House up in Maine, I'm checking out some of the guns they have for sale in their upcoming May, uh, March 2015 auction. I've been looking at a number of 45 caliber early prototype automatic pistols, and another one that jumped out at me was this one. This thing's kind of huge. This is a Mauser, uh, it's a prototype, model 1912-1914, um, prototype for what Mauser was going to call at the time their army pistol. So despite the many years that these pistols spent in development, they were never really able to be translated into a successful commercial or military design. So a lot of this development process started in 1909. Mauser had developed, what they were, they were trying to do was a straight blowback in 9x19 Parabellum. And they made an attempt at it, but it just really didn't work. Um, too much power in the cartridge and, and the pistols wouldn't stand up to it. So they actually, what they did was table that design for a while and uh, scaled it down to 25 ACP as a blowback, which would work just fine. And that caught on very well as the Mauser Model 1910 pocket pistol. And uh, they sold the snot out of those things. And then they came back a year later, a couple of years later, and now having more financial resources to go about the project with, they went back to working on a large scale version of the same sort of pistol. So this particular one is a, a 1912-14, as I said, and it uses an interesting, it's a delayed blowback system, but it's pretty heavily delayed. It's got an interesting mechanism to it. So why don't we go ahead and bring the camera back here and take a closer look at just how it works. All right, so this particular example is serial number eight. They obviously didn't make very many of these, and it is in the rather large 45 ACP caliber. Now, Mauser never actually submitted these to U.S. military trials because, frankly, the pistol never, never got far enough along in development. It was never quite effective enough for, to be worth their time to submit it to the military. I'm sure they had that idea in mind when they were developing it, and that's part of the reason that they would have made some prototypes in 45 in addition to the more typical European 9mm calibers. So, we mentioned that this is a delayed blowback system. And it has a rather interesting mechanism for delaying that blowback. We have this lever right here on the front of the trigger guard, which allows you to manually override the delaying mechanism. What it has is a pair of levers right in here under the front of the slide that lift up and they have an angled surface that locks into the slide itself right under these two uh, protruding areas. And because this surface is angled rather than square, what happens is that when the slide tries to go back, it has to work against the, the friction generated by that mechanical uh, block. It has to push that block down, and only then can the slide go backwards. And they've got a nice hefty spring in there, so the reason that this lever is on the front of the trigger guard is because it's almost impossible to pull the slide back manually without disengaging that locking block, because that locking block is, has to provide enough force to make this gun safe to fire in 45. So if I depress the spring here, now I can open the slide. Now we're going to go ahead and lock it open. And all right, so now you can see these two locking wedges right there. When I depress this button on the front of the trigger guard, they drop down out of the way. So when you fire the pistol, what it has to do is use friction um, the, the surface inside here, pushing against that angled surface, has to overcome the spring tension on these two in order for them to push down and the slide to cycle back. Now, in conjunction with that, because there is so much power involved in this pistol, uh, you can see that there's this silver extrusion right here. These are actually both sides of a buffer that's shaped kind of like an archer's bow. It's several sheets of uh, thin metal. Um, arrayed together, kind of like a bow, and arched, um, convex, facing outward, or facing backward, so that when the slide uh, reaches its full length of travel here, that set of buffer springs uh, dampens the impact on the frame. Um, those, this spring was only present in some of the very early prototypes, and then they got rid of it. Next up, you can see that there is a firing pin, uh, a cocking indicator on the back of the gun. This, of course, is the rear end of the striker itself. Uh, indicates that it is cocked. When you fire, 
that disappears. When you rack the slide, that comes back out. Um, other controls on the pistol has a safety on it, which is of the same style as the Mauser 1910, which is to say it's kind of funky. You push these, this lever down, that puts the pistol on safe, and then pushing the button puts it back on fire. So a combination of two different types of control, which is a, kind of unusual. And of course, we have a heel release for the magazine, right there. Uh, very heavy duty magazine, they probably would have lightened this a bit if it had ever gone into production. So ultimately, while these pistols more or less functioned, they were still pretty finicky and unreliable um, with this delayed blowback system. Mauser would continue to experiment with the design for several, a couple of years, um, but the outbreak of World War I pretty much put an end to experimentation on this design. Um, Mauser obviously had more work than they could handle making arms for the German army, and uh, this one pretty much dead-ended. These were, now of course they went on to produce the other pocket pistols um, of this style where they could use simple plain blowback. Um, the 1910 and the model 1934 and the, the model 1910-14, those were all quite successful and made Mauser a good amount of money but their attempts to scale them up into large pistols like this just didn't work out. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's not every day that we get to take a look at a prototype 45 caliber Mauser pistol. So if you would like to add this particular one to your own collection, because it's a really cool example of what turned out to be a, a dead-end line of development, uh, you do have the option to purchase it. This is going up for sale at the Julia Auction House in March of 2015. It is lot number 2232, and if you click the link right below in the description, that'll take you over to their catalog where you can check out uh, their high-res pictures, their cataloger description, and all the details you'd need to set up an account and either bid online or come down to the auction house in person to check it out. So, thanks for watching.